What exactly hides at the center of the Earth? Why, in 300 years, has humanity only ventured 0-2% into its depths? While the boundaries of the universe continue to be whitened, mankind's imagination of the geographic world remains stuck on the book adventures in the center of the Earth. Max has spent his life studying the Earth's core, but 10 years ago he disappeared while on an exploration trip. Leaving behind his sister-in-law and nephew, Sean, this summer, Sean is sent to spend 10 days vacationing at Trevor's, bringing along Max's belongings. Unexpectedly, Trevor found the Vern book among his belongings. Upon opening it, Trevor finds notes Max made on crustal movement, shockingly matching data from 10 years ago to today. Typically, earthquake sensors show only three lights, but today a fourth appears, indicating something unusual in Iceland's location. Trevor speculates that his brother might have vanished while searching for a volcanic passage to the core in Iceland, as Max always believed in the existence of a direct route to the Earth's center. So, off to Iceland they go, hoping to uncover clues to his disappearance. Trevor immediately books flights for that night, but Sean, not wanting to stay home alone, insists on joining, on the plane. Trevor deciphers a sequence of letters written by his brother, which Sean recognizes as a name. A quick Google search reveals this person as the director of the Isgerson Volcanic Activity Research Institute, likely an acquaintance of Max. Thus, they set their sights on the research institute as their destination. Upon arrival, they learn the director passed away three years ago, and only his daughter, Hannah, resides there now. Hannah, a mountain guide informs them there's no path forward but offers to lead them to the Snaefells volcano to find the earthquake sensor for a modest fee of 5,000 krona an hour. At dusk, Trevor locates the sensor atop the mountain and attempts to extract the black box inside when sudden weather changes force them to retreat. Just leave it for now. Come on. Trevor! Uncle Trevor! Get in here! Oh, get it. With the cave entrance blocked by large rocks, they soon discover a 200-foot deep shaft, an abandoned mine from 60 years ago, possibly holding the clues they seek. With ample rope, Hannah leads their descent along the rock wall. Suddenly, Trevor slips and falls, dragging the others with him due to their connected ropes, until Hannah makes a decisive cut. Safely inside the mine, Hannah starts the generator, illuminating the entire space. Following the tracks that once transported ore, they embark on a temple escape adventure. Uh, it's daylight, otherwise I don't want to know! Narrowly escaping one disaster, they face a fork in the road, forcing them to split up. Hannah's track comes to an end first, and she jumps into Trevor's cart just before hitting the wall. <laughs> Trevor's car smashes a big hole in the wall, and inside, rubies, emeralds, and big diamonds are encrusted all over the cavern. Crystals are usually formed in volcanic craters, which means that by following the opening, they can return to the surface. However, the crisp sound of breaking mica rock beneath their feet warns them of the fragile layer that could shatter under slight pressure. They attempt to edge along the perimeter when a large diamond from Sean's bag falls, piercing the layer and causing it to crack, sending them plummeting down. Their screams intensify as they realize the fall isn't stopping, echoing Vern's narrative of a tunnel reaching thousands of miles deep. Is that water? Huh? Yes! Fortunately, sometime later they entered a water slide, which helped them slow down and eventually fell into a pool of water. After reaching shore, the trio looked up to discover a flock of fluorescent birds, extinct for over a hundred million years, one of which had its eyes on Sean. Following the radiant birds out of the tunnel, they were greeted by a sight of paradise, as if they had discovered another world hidden within our own. Right at the Earth's crust center, gigantic dandelions larger than human faces, enormous mushroom fossils, and a house made from a hollow tree were among the wonders they found. Inside, 
Trevor discovered his brother Max's backpack and notes. While Hannah found Max's body not too far away, Trevor tearfully buried his brother on the beach. According to Max's diary, the surrounding magma had turned the place into a colossal furnace, easily reaching over 200 degrees, and now it was already at 95 degrees. They needed to leave quickly or risk being cooked alive. The diary also outlined an escape plan, traverse the sea to the north to find a river-like geyser that could propel them back to the surface, which would evaporate in 48 hours, making walking there impossible. They crafted a raft from straw and set sail with the help of the hot wind towards the opposite shore. On the way they encounter a piranha attack. <laughs> followed by the appearance of a snake-necked dragon-like water monster that preys on the attacking piranhas and helps them solve the crisis. However, a storm injured Hannah's hand with the rapidly sliding ropes, broke the mast, and Sean was whisked away with the sail. Sean woke up on a beach, knowing he needed to head north to find the geyser and reunite with the others. The bird that had been following him helped find drinkable water and a navigable tunnel. On the other hand, Trevor and Hannah, who have come ashore, are attacked by cannibalistic plants. Trevor saves Hannah, although they find the hole that leads to the geyser, they realize that Sean is not there, splitting up. Trevor went in search of Sean, while Hannah waited by the river. Hey, come on, wait up. Sean, after entering a cave, was chased by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But managed to escape into another cave, which the T-Rex smashed through. Hearing Sean's screams from behind the cave wall, Trevor urgently broke through the wall with a stick to rescue him, but the T-Rex continued its pursuit. To escape the dinosaur for good, Trevor lured it to a mica rock area. I just remembered something. They entered a cave heading for the geyser, only to find the river water boiling. So Hannah paddles the dinosaur's skull and emerges, only to paddle and the river disappears and the riverbed is revealed. The three of them fell into the crater along with the keel and got stuck inside the cave wall. However, the magma from the crater below was rising upwards. They were too late, missing the geyser's cycle. However, Noticing the wall was still wet, indicating a river or underground stream behind it, and spotting magnesium on the wall, Trevor ignited the magnesium with a flare, blasting through the wall. Water gushed forth, pouring into the volcanic magma and creating a massive wave of steam, The dragon bone raft slid down the mountain, flattening vineyards along its path until crashing into a farmhouse, where it finally came to a halt. 
Surveying his surroundings, Trevor realized they had emerged at Italy's Mount Vesuvius, the site of the ruined vineyard enraged the elderly farmer, but his mood shifted to joy when Sean presented a large diamond from his backpack as compensation. After surviving this life-or-death adventure, Trevor found himself falling in love with Hannah, 